Alright then, hi everyone. Today we're going to be having a look at the Death Guard section of the new supplement. I wasn't going to cover this book at first, but then I thought I should do the Death Guard bit, seeing as I've done the, you know, the Death Guard Codex on this channel. I'll do the Death Guard bit as well. Um, I wouldn't normally go over the full rules in detail, normally I kind of skim them and just tell you my opinion. Um, I'm going to still do that, but I'm going to go over everything individually as well this time, seeing as it's actually uh, a new release. Um, and you know, you, normally I assume you've already seen the rules, but we'll, we'll assume this time you haven't. Uh, but that being said, this isn't just going to be me telling you what's in the book. Uh, there's a lot of other channels already doing that. Um, I'm going to be just talking with my experience as a as a long time gamer, chaos player, and I'm going to really give you my opinion on on everything, and you know, see how you could implement it into the list, into into your games, what advantages you could get from things. Um, I think there's a lot of good stuff, but I do have some strong opinions as well. Um, uh, before I get to the, the specifics, I, I will just say um, I don't I don't like this supplement existing. I think it either shouldn't exist or should exist a, a year or so from now. Um, I think that it's ridiculous that one army that dropped a month ago is getting a supplement. One army is getting essentially day one DLC. The codex comes out the same day as the supplement for that codex, the Dark Eldar. And then the Admech and the Imperial Knights don't even have a codex. Who knows when they will. Admech seem to be up next. But, you know, uh, it's ridiculous. It's a joke, to be honest. Um, I think it's really stupid. It's just it's just pathetic. It's greed and mismanagement. And it's just Classic Games Workshop, unfortunately. Um, I've, I've got, personally got no intention either of buying this. Um, it's £35. I'm sure that even a full codex is only £25. And normally supplements are cheaper. I'd have expected this to be about £20, but it's £35. Uh, for a few pages of rules. Uh, even if you took all the rules combined, it wouldn't add up to one codex even. And most likely most people like me are just going to have one army. I just have Death Guard. I expect people out there just have Dark Eldar. It's £35. Even if you were maybe an Imperium player when you had Admech and Imperial Knights, you'd be getting two for the price of one. It's still just it's expensive. I don't know why it's expensive. But anyway, that's obligatory. The oblig obligatory complaint. That's out of the way. Um, <laughs> Let's get, let's get straight to it, if anybody stuck around past all that negativity. Um, so, the idea behind this is, it's, I've forgotten what it's called, it's the Terminus Est um, Infection Assault Force or something. The basic idea is that it's a boarding party, it's Typhus personally spearheading a boarding action or a city invasion or something. And so it's an infantry based army. So you have the limitations, no Mortarion, can't have him, that's good. You know, I'd get fed up with seeing Primarchs all over the place anyway. Um, and the main, the big thing really is you can't have any vehicles. No vehicles. This has to be a completely foot-based foot, foot -based army. So it's essentially going to be, you know, your troops and maybe some, some beasts and that sort of thing. But basically this is an infantry army. Um, that's probably going to put a lot of people off already. Um, I think it's a fun idea. You know, I'd, a lot of people don't really take vehicles anyway. Um, I do because I like them aesthetically. But it's, it's certainly true that they're not really the best thing. Uh, you know, practically in the game right now, infantry is is probably more strong. But, you know, it, it might put some people off. Um, I would be open to having a go with it, though. Um, I'm not going to complain about this too much because it's just my opinion. Uh, but I'm also... <laughs> I would probably never bother playing this myself. This is why I'm not interested in the supplement. Because um, you to use this, you have to be the... Um, the Harbingers, you have to be the Harbingers. Um, they, in my opinion, they're the worst of the seven. I would rather play any of the other six play companies before them. Um, I think they're worthless. I honestly, I would have no intention of playing the Harbingers um, compared to these other these other things. So already, that's a big sort of nail in the coffin for me. It's it's based around one of the, you know, the last um, play company that I'd actually bother playing. You know, the Warlord traits rubbish. The stratagems rubbish. Um, the relic is rubbish. It's just, it's just not good. So you know, you are stuck with this. Uh, it's up to you, I guess, up to me as well for my own use. Whether the um, the things you get within the supplement make up for you know really being the worst of the of the seven. Um, and if you disagree, shout at me in the comments. I always welcome that. Do shout at me in the comments. Say no, Poxwalkers are good. Um, I think that they are <laughs> horrifically boring. I hate seeing them in bat reps. I don't use them. They're just this boring, stagnant thing. It's they're horrible. Uh, but anyway, um, so you get basically one wall of trait and a full set of psychic powers and a full set of relics. Now that is pretty good. Normally with a supplement you get, you know, like three maybe, three different things. Oh, and four uh, stratagems as well. So it's it's fairly good as far as supplements go, you know, normally, especially for chaos. Um, but, you know, it's it's still, I'm not sure about it, but let's get into it. 
So your one warlord trait is called Harbinger of Death. And at first I liked it. I thought it was good. And then I read um, the fine print a bit more <laughs> and decided, oh, well, uh, maybe, maybe it's a bit rubbish. Basically, you have a three inch aura. It's like your standard contagions that give you a sort of aura thing. Um, and within your three inch aura, enemy units lose objective secured and they can't perform actions. Now, that to me at first seemed really strong. It's kind of like the one you have in the codex already that turns off aura abilities. Uh, I felt that you know having a warlord trait that can turn off um, objective secured and stop people from performing actions. Initially, I thought that was really strong. I was you know was, that's actually that's pretty good. Uh, but it only works on enemies with leadership seven or under. So immediately, it's not going to work on any space marine armies um, and or necrons or really anything that isn't pretty much orc boys. Or guardsmen. I'm sure even Eldar of leadership eight or so. Um, so originally, you know, that was just rubbish. It kind of killed it for me immediately. Um, you should keep in mind, if you, you know, if you want to still try to use it, you can keep in mind um, that you have the break their spirits stratagem for the terminators. If you are in combat with a terminator unit, if you if you're in the situation where the terminator unit itself is uh, contesting an objective, currently contesting an objective that you're trying to maybe score at the end of your turn or it um, is in combat with a unit that's performing an action and is you know, still performing the action because some actions you don't have to not be out of combat. I think if you're scoring maybe line breaker or something, you can be in combat and still score it um, or something like that. Um, and you have the break their spirit stratagem for one to command points, so it's pretty good. And what that does is it makes the enemy unit, if they take a casualty in combat, it makes a minus, li one, minus four leadership minus four leadership for the end of that turn. So it's just the end of that turn, essentially. The intention in the book is to catch them in the morale phase. But for the purposes of maybe scoring an objective at the end of the turn, um, if you, you know, if you put them, if you use this and then minus four leadership now, uh, you know, even if you were fighting Space Marines or Necrons or anything that was, you know, even leadership 10, um, you've put it down to below seven now um, and your Wall of Trait would take effect. So, you know, if you, you, if you were had this on, you know, your Lord of Contagion, or Typhus, or Lord of, um, is it Vivulence, the new one? If you knew, if you had him on any of those, and you did have him with the Blight Lords or the Death Shroud, um, or even on his own, because he is a Terminator, so he can also use the stratagem, um, you know, you could minus four leadership and have this Warlord trait go off, but, you know, at the end of the day, you're spending a command point each time to do that. Um, also, Chaos Spawn have a minus one leadership aura within six inches, so if you had a unit of Spawn around, um, you know, if you were playing Marines and you had leadership eight all over the place, you know, potentially if you had spawn lurking around, not even necessarily in combat, six inches away somewhere, uh, you you know, you could put you could put them down to seven. But for me, it's just I don't want faff to have to do to get a wall of trait to work. I just like my wall of trait to work. I'm also never a fan of these things like uh, slaughterborn for the for the world eaters, where you only get it when you've killed something. It's like, well, I want it all the time, not just if I've maybe killed somebody else's character. But anyway, um, so the wall of trait is a bit of a dud for me. I wouldn't bother taking it. Uh, it's a shame about the leadership seven thing, really. It's, you know, it's a bit naff. Um, but you know, if you did want, if they, you know, if you did want to utilize ways to minus people's leadership, potentially could catch them out. But I'm not, I'm not so sure about that myself. I think it's a bit disappointing. So, just the one waller trait. You go straight on to uh, the. Well, they have a reserves thing now. It's essentially you can put your plague marines or pox walkers or cultists or spawn or possessed anything that's not a vehicle essentially because you have no vehicles uh, <laughs> which leaves you with that those choices um, you can put them in strategic reserve and bring them on uh, via deep strike later on if you want to so just to run you through the costs uh, one power level to nine power level is two command points ten power level to nineteen power level is three command points and so on um, so you know Putting back maybe 1 to 9 for 2 command points, putting back 10 to 19 for 3 command points. Uh, I'm not personally a fan of doing this because I tend to feel like I pay enough command points anyway. I normally always will have at least a second battalion um, and then maybe an extra relic, extra wall or trait. So I'm down, you know, 5 or 6 command points already most games. So, you know, I've never really wanted to pay another 2 or 3 or more CP for strategic reserves. Uh, but that's up to you because... I have to say, as much negativity as I have about this supplement, if I was to use it, 
This, out of all the rest of the stuff you get with this supplement, this is what I would um, exploit. I'd pretty much come into games saying, okay, I've got no CP, but I've got a bunch of Plague Marines or, you know, Cultists or, um, you know, maybe even Chaos Spawns or something um, in Deep Strike, essentially, um, and just go for strategic reserves because this really, I feel like this is the most tactically exploitable uh, thing you have in this codex. Um, Plague Marines are six... six uh, <laughs> six uh, power level for five or 12 for six to 10. Cultists are two for up to 10, five power level for up to 20 or eight power level if you go for the full 30. Poxwalkers are two for 10 or less, uh, five for 11 to 20. Possessed are six for the squad of five or 12 for squad of um, six plus. And spawn are one power level per spawn and you can have a maximum of unit of unit size of five so you know you could have a um, max power level five so you know if you just wanted to pay your let's say you want to go all in and pay you know three cp for 10 to 10 to 19 um you know you could deep strike a squad of plague marines a big 10 man squad of plague marines um you know i just i don't know about Spawn. Um, I think maybe I like Spawn personally. <laughs> I have said in the past in my other videos that I'm a fan of actually running Spawn individually. Um, I actually, you know, to start the game to just maybe pay two CP for the one to nine power level in reserves. I might, you know, I could see myself taking maybe three individual Spawn and paying, you know, taking up three power level of that nine power level, and just sticking three individual Spawn uh, in Deep Strike to bring down and just randomly charge stuff, or maybe sit on an objective later on. Um, they're pretty useful, I, I find. I enjoy spawn. I think a lot of people overlook them um, because, you know, they're not amazing. But I definitely, I've always thought they're good distractions because they only cost you 23 points. And, you know, a Plague Marine is 21 points. So for 23 points, you get a lot for, for the spawn. So, you know, I think using a, just a couple of points to deep strike spawn would be pretty good. Deep striking Plague Marines is very interesting to me. Um, whether you go for, you know, a unit of six or a, a full-on unit of ten, um, whether you want to maybe, you know, use the deep strike to hide them somewhere, put them, you know, on the edges of the board behind cover and just try to sit them somewhere, or whether you want to use it aggressively. Um, I wouldn't recommend trying to use it as like a combat thing for them to charge because, you know, you, you always fail those nine inch charges. You know you do, if you, especially if you haven't got a reroll. Um, so I wouldn't maybe go for that, but I could definitely see wanting to... Um, because if you paid three command points and you got 10 to 19, you could do this with a squad of Plague Marines which is 12 power level, and some character, which I'm sure would be under eight, um, if you took you know, one of the Terminator characters, or maybe something like a Tallyman, and you could just bring in a squad of 10 Plague Marines somewhere, uh, you know, use the Tallyman to give them plus one to hit, and uh, I think it's um, extra hits on sixes, if you have the Tollkeeper or something. You know, I could, I could definitely see that being pretty useful, to, to really bring in a strong 10-man unit, you know, fully armed up with Blight Launchers and everything. Uh, maybe even you could, uh, you can take, I think, two Plague spurters and two plague spewers in one 10 man unit so that's four auto hitting d6 sort of flame type weapons you know you could pay your cp bring those down hose hose somebody away maybe you know 12 inches um i, I could see a lot of you i'm not going to go through all the uses but i could see a lot of uses for wanting to bring down a good strong 10 man unit plus a character or two maybe if you go for the cheaper ones um i do think there's i, th I do think that could be worth it um, if it was me, you know, I really wanted to exploit this, I'd probably just pay four command points and get the 20 to 29 and just bring down half an army, you know, have maybe, because I'm a fan of using things like predators anyway, so, you know, having stuff on the table, it's not a worry for me. Can't take them. But see, again, I don't even want to take this battalion. I'm talking about using my tanks already. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, point is, you know, it's. I think you could get away with keeping, you know, even 20 to 29 power level in reserve. Still have plenty of things on the table, you know, so you've got your 50% or whatever it is these days. Um, I really would probably overcommit to this. You know, for 20 to 29, you could have two full squads of Plague Marines and still a character or two. I think it's going to be really good. Uh, whether you use it aggressively early on or you save it for a sort of later game, um, it is frustrating for people to bring in fresh units later on. Um, now, cultists, poxwalkers, 
if you were to use these, I think this is maybe the one time when I would actually use these because you also have a stratagem, which I'll get to later, which allows you to shoot into combat. Now, if you have those units of either Boxwalkers or Cultists in combat, you could choose the unit, pay your 2 CP and shoot the unit they're fighting with. So I could definitely see the idea of um, obviously bringing down Boxwalker units to just stand on objectives, you know, 20-man blob, um, power level 5, it's pretty good, you know, power level 5, 20-man blob, you could pay your 3 CP for the 10 to 19 slot, get two, two of those coming in, that'd be that'd be the, the basic 10, you'd still have 9 power left to do something else with, you know, two 20-man blobs, or even, you know, three 10-man blobs or something, just to sit on objectives, it's pretty good, but, you know, what? otherwise I'd probably do for units of 20, and I'd try to charge them, I know I just said that charging isn't reliable, it's not reliable, i do it with two or three units to really make sure, but, you know, if you could bring Poxwalkers down in deep strike, stop people mowing them down as they get across the table, and then and do it aggressively so your plan is to then shoot the unit that you've charged with them, I think it could be pretty good. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to go through all, all my ideas because I want to keep this video somewhat short, but honestly, this, um, this reserves thing, I think this is the main draw, at least for me, of the, the supplement. I think that, you know, being able to deep strike Plague Beans, Poxwalkers, that sort of thing, uh, you know, the possibilities are endless. You could use it any way you want, defensively, uh, aggressively, to focus on objectives, to just deny board space, to block people off, maybe. It's, it's great. So much you could do with it. Uh, so you've got four stratagems. The first is called Rotting Tide. It's two command points or three command points. It's one of those ones where if a unit is either half-sized or dead of Poxwalkers, specifically Poxwalkers, you can bring them back uh, within six inches of any board edge. It's one use only, and it's two command points if they're 10 or less, or three command points if they're 11 to 20. Um, I'm not a huge fan of these types of stratagems, but I could definitely see it, you know, maybe really saving you uh, in certain situations. Would I pay two or three command points for it? Personally, no. I, I feel like I always try to evaluate my army um, as points, points cost versus three you know command points and for me the idea of either paying you know three command points to bring back a dead unit of pox workers or just buying a, another unit of pox workers you know to begin with and just having more units of pox workers for me that's generally what i would prefer to do because I, I don't look at you know 20 pox workers and i think that's a good three command points um but in the right situations i could i could see you, you really you know using this to bring it up if you've, if you've had your component your opponent just shooting at this one unit to try to get rid of it from somewhere um and it's really taken them a long time and they finally killed the last guy um you know the three command points might be worth the sheer frustration of just bringing the whole thing back <laughs> um so you know maybe you like that more than i do i probably wouldn't ever use that myself but it's okay and then another one is also for Poxwalkers only. Remember I said at the beginning of the video, I don't like or use Poxwalkers, so for me it's not great. I think all four of these stratagems are focused on Poxwalkers, but what can you do? You've got Unleash the Tide, there's two command points. Um, you can use it in the movement phase or the fight phase. If you do it in the movement phase, they get plus three movement, and if you do it in the fight phase, they can consolidate, no, sorry, pile in. They can pile in um, three inches extra. So, you know... It, so it moves you up, I, I suppose it moves you up a bit if your if you're plague, 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 uh, Poxwalker blob was lagging behind and you wanted a 3 inch extra pile in. Um, they're not as useful as they used to be, seeing as you can't attack things that you didn't charge anymore. Also, getting an extra 3 inches pile in, uh, it's not as useful as it used to be. Um, 3 inches extra movement though, you know, to try to run them across the board a bit faster. It's okay, but honestly 2 command points I think is a bit steep, I wouldn't pay 2 command points for this. And next you've got Pestilential Drop. What that does is any unit that's come in from Strategic Reserves or Teleport Strike, the Contagion range for that unit is maxed out to 12 inches. Uh, this is really cool. In one of the, my video uh, walkthrough of the Death Guard Codex that I did, I was talking about how you could um, get that for units such as Terminators that have come down this turn by taking uh, you know, the Chimes of Contagion and using Flash Outbreak, that's plus 6 inches, and using uh, one of the Psychic Powers, which uh, gives you another... I think six inches to your to your contagion range to you know to be able to boost up to about 12 inches um, so that you can get people immediately down to minus one toughness and have an easier time shooting at them with your, your bolters and things um, so this being able to uh, just pay the is two command points being able to just pay the two cp and you know essentially guarantee that your deep strike target 
is um, you know within 12 inches for the minus one toughness. Uh, it, I think it's definitely going to be pretty useful. Um, you know, there may well be a fair number of situations when you really want to get that minus one toughness on an enemy unit so you can immediately open fire with your bolters or something. Um, but, you know, I'm also not sure. Uh, I feel like I haven't been able to put this into practice too often yet, but I really feel like if you're moving the Death Guard army up there, a lot of stuff is probably going to be in contagion range anyway, um, you know, just, just through the, the nature of the game. Uh, at least often when I play, my, my stuff tends to be quite close. I play quite an, an aggressive Death Guard army. Um, I focus on short range firepower and close combat a lot. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure how often you, you might necessarily need this, but certainly if you were bringing down a fire pa firepower based unit, like uh, 10 Blight, Blight Lord Terminators with combi bolters, or, you know, you were using the strategic reserves to bring in 10 Plague Marines or something, uh, again, with mass, mass bolters and... Um, uh, you know, blight launches and that sort of thing. Getting the minus one toughness immediately within the full max 12 inches, um, I definitely think that it's potentially worth 2 CP um, on the right targets. If you really want to just hit something hard, it could be worth paying 2 CP for. I don't think it's going to be something that you're going to just auto use, you know, every turn um, in an endless cacophony kind of sense where it's just you obviously pay the 2 CP. Um, but I think it's definitely going to prove nice, nice to have in clutch situations. Uh, maybe if you had a unit of Death Shroud Terminators and they all had all their uh, Plague Spurt Gauntlets and, you, you know, you could you could just immediately get people down to Toughness 3 because those Gauntlets are only Strength 3, I think, so you'd be wounding on 4s instead of 5s. Um, it'd be a pretty decent way to emerge from a Deep Strike. Um, but there you go. You know, you can use it if you want to. I think it's okay, but it's not great. And then you've got Callous Disregard. Um, now this is what I mentioned earlier, it's the one that allows you to choose a friendly unit and that friendly unit is allowed to shoot um, at an enemy unit that has that is within engagement range of a friendly uh, poxwalkers or cultist unit. So you might remember this or something like this if you're a bit of an older player, not too old, um, from the uh, Siege of Vrax books. You used to have one, I believe it was called Ordnance Tyrant, and it allowed you to fire blast weapons and things into combat, and you also have Plague Zombies in the book that cost about two points or something, and you could have up to 50 of them in the unit. And the idea was to just run the, these blobs of Plague Zombies forwards, tie people up, and then just shell them with all your artillery and stuff. This, you know, isn't that potent, because that was your whole army. <laughs> um, but still, I think I can definitely see, you know, why people would want to use this. If you take your big units of uh, 20 box workers or even 30 cultists, um, just start tying stuff up with them. Choose a nice unit of um, something shooty, you know, Terminators or maybe some Plague Marines, uh, and just open fire into them. I, I could definitely see this. <laughs> working out really well, especially maybe if you've used the strategic reserves ability that you have with this army to um, put your um, sorry, poxwalkers or cultists in, into reserves and deep strike them um, and, and then charge after the deep strike, you know, um, that's probably what I would try doing with a couple of units of cultists or poxwalkers, um, you know, charge them specifically where I want them and then shoot the target, you know, um, obviously next turn. <laughs> Um, but, you know, you, you might also just find yourself there naturally over the course of the game and think, you know, I really wish I could shoot that, but it's in combat and, you know, you didn't fall back for some reason. Um, but, you know, again, remember that if you do want to shoot something, then moving back is the, the, the best thing to do. But you can't then recharge most of the time. So you may, you know, you may find situations where you would rather stay in combat with it, but also really want to shoot it. Um, I think this one is maybe one of the only ones that I would actually agree is worth 2 CP. I do think it's a good 2 CP to spend. Um, if I was to play this, I could you know, probably see myself using this every game, to be honest. I think that being able to shoot something in combat, uh, it's incredibly useful. You do suffer minus one to hit, and if you miss, um, you'll hit that friendly unit. So you'll end up potentially shooting some of your own poxwalkers. Um, it doesn't matter, obviously. Uh, it's really good, really clutch. It's definitely going to help you out. And at the end of the day, if you were using, say, uh, plague sprayers and that sort of thing, you wouldn't even be affected by the minus one to hit, and you wouldn't hit your own guys. You just automatically hit the enemy still. So yeah, this is this is a really good one. I, I personally think it's probably the most useful out of all of these stratagems. Um, yeah, I you know I think this is a good this is a good one. I, I definitely recommend this one. 
Um, I will probably never get to use it because I don't think I'm going to use this detachment uh, formation type thing, but uh, if I did, I would be definitely setting aside some command points to use this. Um, I do recommend when you play games to not just use command points uh, sort of uh, um, impulsively. I, w I think that it's best if you sort of plot out your turns and think, you know, I'm going to want to use this this turn and this the next turn and this, you know, through the game. So you've got enough. Um, if I was playing this, I would definitely make sure I had two CP spare each turn because you never know when it's going to pop up. I think that's definitely a really good one to use. And next up, we've got the Fester Discipline. Now, this is actually a pretty good discipline. I wasn't expecting too much from it. I don't think I'd necessarily use all the powers, but it's definitely a good, you know, maybe the main two that you would you would use every turn. So the first one you've got is Gift of Infection. This targets an enemy unit within 18 inches, and it's minus one toughness. I would probably never bother using this. I think it's a bit rubbish, because... It, it does not stack with your contagions. So if something is already minus one toughness due to your contagions, this does not make the minus two toughness. Personally, I think this is the only effect, the only use this power has. Um, again, like I mentioned earlier, I feel like most of the time people are already gonna be within contagion range when you're shooting at them. Uh, you know, yes, maybe if you're firing 24 inches away, you know, or well, 18 inches away at a unit that you're not very close to yet, you can have the Psyker put minus one toughness on them, make your bolters, you know, win them a bit easier. But, you know, I really, I really just feel like you take this and end up in range of a lot of stuff anyway and not really use it. I think that if, what if it was uh, cumulative, if you could stack it, that would be the main use of this, of this stratagem. I think not stacking, you know, I wouldn't bother taking it. I really wouldn't bother taking it. It's a seven plus to cast. I think I forgot to mention that. Uh, it's just a shame that it doesn't stack. I really think that, you know, in, in an army where the whole deal is that your army's super doctrine is, is that you give out minus one toughness with an increasing aura. You know, I really, I really don't think that you need a psychic power to do this as well, <laughs> especially seeing as you just got the stratagem that allows you to maximize your contagion range of 12 inches, you know, in case you did deep strike and you weren't within the six inches or three inches yet. Um, you know, do you need the psychic power as well? Uh, in my opinion, only if it's stacked. But, you know, that's because I'm a disgusting, disgusting cheese player and I would stack it. <laughs> um, then you've got Lung Rot, which is a 7 plus as well. It's also choose an enemy within 18 inches. Um, they can't advance and they can only declare charges up to 6 inches. So on one hand, probably going to make them 1, 2d6. Um, but on the other hand, you know, if you know that they can only charge 6 inches, that's firstly, that's going to give you a lot of freedom personally. Uh, you're going to be able to know that you can move in a certain area and not risk being charged by them. Um, so that's, that's going to be useful to you to just know that. Um, and it's probably going to be really frustrating to them. Nobody wants to be charged, told, oh, you know, you can't charge that because it's eight inches, away now. <laughs> eight inches away now. And they also can't reroll hit rolls. So, I mean, you know, for one power, that's seven plus to cast. You know, they can't advance. They can't declare more than a six inch charge and they can't re-roll hit rolls. I mean, it's just incredible. It's so good. This is probably one that I would take on my Sorcerer uh, every game. It's so good. Telling somebody they can't advance, I mean, that's going to screw them over for objectives, not going to be able to make the objective this time that they wanted to. Um, only being able to declare six inch charges, you know, again, you can move a bit more safely. Obviously, you need to know how far they can move, um, you know, so, but then you, you, you work it out yourself. How far, like, how far can they move? plus the six inch charge, you know, you can work that out yourself, find out where it's safe for you to move now. Um, and they can't reroll. So if you are minus one to hit, whether that's miasma or some other ability, smoke screen, no, sorry, there's no smoke screen, <laughs> miasma or something else, you know, minus one to hit, it's going to really screw them. Those Marines, those Marines, when you do get them down to hitting on four pluses, they start to really rely on, you know, rerolls and things. So um, telling them that, you know, they can't re-roll. Um, that's definitely going to hurt people, I think. You know, for that four ups to hit or something, um, that you know that potentially could save your unit from being completely annihilated. If we're talking about, you know, um, only you know four hits out of eight hitting you or something with no re-rolls, it's going to be good. Um, the next one is Pernicious Dose, which is a seven plus again. Um, this time though, you choose a friendly unit within six inches and they can re-roll hit rolls with plague weapons. Now this works on range or in melee combat, so um, I feel like most of the time this is probably going to be uh, a melee-based melee 
bits things so you can get your your blight lord terminators or your death shroud or something or even your plague marines because they're quite good in combat now uh re-rolling to hit with their plague knives uh man reapers and whatever but it does also affect range weapons so that would be you know mainly in terms of an infantry based army with no tanks uh that's basically going to be um blight launchers but if you were to use the virulent round stratagem then you know on a whole unit of Baltimore marines that's going to be pretty good um it's nice. I like having these reroll things because ultimately, you know, you've only got so many characters now. It's even more limited than it used to be. Um, you're not necessarily going to have so many reroll ones sources. Um, in the past, I often complained about getting getting the rerolls to hit because I think, well, I don't need four rerolls to hit from this spell or this stratagem or whatever because I'm already rerolling ones and I've got plus one to hit, so I'm hitting on twos, you know. Uh, but in this case, if you did have maybe a tallyman, a tallyman you know, giving them the plus one to hit aura, but your Lord of Contagion or Demon Prince or whatever is over there somewhere. Getting, you know, re-rolls re -rolls of one as well, just through casting this power. Um, you know, it's pretty good. You can always do re-roll. You can always do with re-rolls of one, re-rolls to hit. Um, you know, whether you've got plus one to hit or, or anything. Um, I think a good one to use it on would be um, Death Shroud, because they've got a weapon skill of two plus, but if they use that sort of smash type attack, uh, they're minus one to hit, so you know they go down to three pluses to hit. Cast this on them, they're now three pluses to hit. Rerolling, it's going to be pretty good. Um, don't know if it's going to be one of the main ones that you take, seeing as you know you've got a fair number of plus ones to hit and rerolls and things in the Death Guard army. Because if you're Terminators, you also have uh, Vermid Whispers for plus one to hit again. So you know you're hitting on twos potentially fairly often. Um, but still, you know, rerolls to hit, it's always good. And then you've got Noxious Discharge. Now this is a 6 plus to cast. It's the first and I think maybe only 6 plus to cast. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's the only 6 plus to cast. Uh, you choose an enemy within 12 inches. They take one mortal wound. Then enemy units within 3 inches take one mortal wound. Uh, um, I think this is rubbish. I just think this is straight up rubbish. <laughs> I don't think you'd ever bother using this personally. Uh, one mortal wound on one unit. <clears throat> and then enemy units within three inches of that unit also. If it was D3 on the first target and then units took one mortal wound, um, like um, I think it's like Astral Blast or something that the Thousand Suns get and that sort of thing, um, you know, it'd be all right then. But one mortal wound... On, on your first target, and then one mortal wound splash damage. Uh, that's rubbish, honestly. Just that's just rubbish. Um, maybe you know if you just needed, if there was something clinging to life with one wound, and you could cast this, get rid of it. You know, maybe um, if there was a bunch of stuff clustered together, and maybe a bunch of individual characters, um, and you had the ability to just sort of snip a, a mortal wound off of off of all three or four of them. If you had, you know, the like, lieutenant. And the librarian and the captain all in the same place and you could just take a mortal wound off all of them you know maybe but i'd you know i feel like seeing considering the other powers you have access to that you know you already have access to a good number of death guard psychic powers that do a fair few mortal wounds to be honest um i feel like just taking what this one that just does one if it happened on like a three plus to cast or something <laughs> then maybe but Ew, this one actually surprised me. I thought, what, <laughs> what rubbish. Again, let me know if I'm wrong. Tell me how, you know, if there's some great situation that I'm not thinking of that you know about, you know, shout at me in the comments, let me know. But, you know, one mortal wound, ew, not, not great in my opinion. <clears throat> uh, the next one is Rot Wind. This is back to being a 7 plus again. Uh, you choose an enemy within 18 inches and... The AP of any ranged or melee weapons, um, you know, both. It's, it just it doesn't specify. It says only uh, any the AP of any weapons um, that they have is reduced by two until the next psychic phase. Um, this is my other favourite stratagem. I would take this every damn game. This is incredible. This is amazing. It's a shame that you've got it stuck in this uh, crappy battalion detachment that you've got to take. You know, the harbingers and that sort of thing with no vehicles. Because um, I'll probably never get to use it. <laughs> but uh, man, this is good. Because uh, when it says AP minus 2 AP, what it means is it reduces the AP. So if they were, you know, AP minus 3, um, they are now AP minus 1. Or if they were AP minus 2, then AP minus nothing. So 
Um, you know, you could put this on a unit of Hell Blasters. You could put this on, you know, if you've got Marines in the Tactical Doctrine, um, Primaris Marines in the Tactical Doctrine, their bolters are now AP minus two, but you can cast this on them, AP minus nothing. You know, Hell Blasters, I think, are AP minus four normally. They just shoot you and you die. Um, it's only minus two in that case, so you've got your five up save still. Now, if you're talking in combat, you know, if it's a unit with power swords, you know, they're just AP minus one now. Thunder Hammers, they're only AP minus two as it is now. You cast this, they're AP nothing. Honestly, this is amazing. I mean, the, the use is endless. To be able to just choose a unit and say that until the next psychic phase, say for your shooting phase and for your combat phase, AP minus two on your weapons, you've potentially got no AP now. Um, or if you did have a greater AP, like three or four, it's considerably worse. You could really take the sting out of a dangerous unit. You know, this is this is great. This is really good. Um, if anything, I'm surprised that it's only a seven plus to cast. You know, they could have made this an eight or nine if they wanted to. I think um, really good. And I wish I could have it in my in my normal Death Guard army. And the last one is called Accelerated Entropy. It's a seven plus to cast as well. And what you do is you choose an enemy model within twelve inches, and you roll off. You roll a d6 each and you add it to your toughness. If you beat their toughness, they take three mortal wounds. And if you double their toughness, you they take d3 plus three mortal wounds. Um, now that being said, it's not if you double their toughness, it's if, it's if you double, if you beat them by double, if you win by double. So if you if they took their toughness, added you know two to it, let's say if you know they were a marine, their toughness four anyway, uh, unless they roll a one. And you happen to, you know, score essentially a ten plus or an eleven um, by adding five or six to your toughness five, then you could double it. But that's if they roll a one, um, or if they're toughness three, if they roll a two. Still, most likely not going to happen. Um, I do, however, think that the main effect of just causing three mortal wounds, still really good. Um, you know, because you, there's a good chance you're going to win a toughness five. Most other things in the game are probably toughness three. Um, or maybe, you know, toughness 4 if it's a marine or a character. Some might be toughness 5 if you're, you know, fighting something really tough like Necrons. But still, just beating somebody in a roll-off um, doesn't hurt you. you know, normally when you do these roll-off things, it's like, oh, if you fail, then this happens to you. Uh, nothing happens if you fail. It's just if you win, they take three more to wins. Um, I think it's pretty good. I would probably take this too. I think I would, I said I would take my favourites are Rotwind and... Um, Lung rot, I think I said, but you know, I think that accelerated entropy, if I was to take a third power, um, you know, on a different source or that sort of thing, or maybe the one power that a Dean Prince gets, accelerated entropy, it could be pretty good. Um, I mean, you know, nobody's going to turn down three mortal wounds, are they? But it is quite random. You want to cast it, then you've got to beat their toughness. It's quite random. Um, I feel like it's one of those things that you'll probably fail more often than not. They'll roll a five and you'll get a two and it'll just be rubbish. But um, yeah, I think it's worth casting just for the chance of doing three mortal wounds. Um, so that's the last of your psychic powers. The, the last thing to talk about is relics. Now the first relic is filth sensors. Now filth sensors is for a psychic only and it adds six inches to the psychic powers. Um, this is pretty good. It, there's a lot of range 18 powers for the Death Guard, it would make them range 24. Um, so if you were maybe, if your sorcerer was doing something like casting minus one toughness and that sort of thing, to try to support, you know, a bolted gun line, something like this would allow you, your sorcerer, to keep up with the 24 inches that they've got. Um, but, you know, I'm not sure that I would really spend a whole relic choice on this personally. Um, I think there's better stuff you could take. Six inches on psychic powers is great. Uh, if it was, uh, you know, something that you could give them that like, did, they didn't, didn't take up a relic slot, maybe it was, you know, some other thing they could take. But just, you know, taking up an entire relic slot for plus six inches to powers, I'm not sure that I would bother doing that. Um, if, you, if there's a particular power that you really like and you feel through experience as a player that you just never really quite get there to pull it off, um, then it could definitely work for you. Um, you know, adding, I think the Thousand Suns can add uh, six inches 
to you know death hex and that sort of thing that's probably really useful if you're in a similar position where there's a really good power that you like whether from this book or the main book that you just through your playing experience feel like you don't really get in range to cast then this might be perfect for you but otherwise i would overlook it personally i wouldn't i wouldn't go crazy for this one that i do like though is called the mark of the terminus est now this one um uh, this this is this is a good relic because you get a lot of stuff for it. Any relic that gives you multiple effects, I think, is you know really worth taking. It gives you plus one strength right off the bat, plus one strength. <clears throat> um, your enemy can't reroll wounds against you, so you know if you had a lieutenant around, those lieutenant rerolls of one are always annoying. Um, but they can't reroll to wound against you, and you once per game can auto pass a save. Now those three things are really good, um, especially combined. If you were to put this with something like the uh, Hulking Physique um, Warlord trait, it gives you plus one wound and ones, twos or threes to wound automatically fail. If you were fighting somebody that had a really annoying reroll wounds aura, you were to put them down to, you know, not, not only rerolling ones to wound, but, you know, now you say, oh, you can't reroll those twos or threes either because of, you know, whatever ability you have. Um, you know, you see only being able to wound, be wounded on 4 plus from this wall of trait essentially, um, but then you also deny them being able to reroll any of those 4, you know, 4 pluses to wound with no rerolls is not great. Um, and you, again, you may well have minuses to hit on you as well, so I think that's a pretty good one. Um, also passing a save once per game, you know, could really save your life, could be the last wound that's about to kill you, and you just, you just shrug it off, or maybe you've got hit by a big super weapon that's six damage and it's going to kill you immediately. Again, you can just pass your invulnerable save in that situation, and you're good to go. And plus one strength is really useful, um, because if you have something like a Mana Reaper, um, which is, I believe, plus one strength for the sweep attacks, or plus three strength for the uh, sort of smash attacks, in either case... Um, it's going to bump you from strength 5 to strength 6 with that weapon, which is great because now you know, you're know you wounding marines and things on 2s at strength 6 versus toughness 3 within contagion range. Um, and again, if it puts you up to strength 8 for your smash attacks, it's going to mean that you get um, a nice plus 1 to wound against pretty much any vehicle really You know, at that point, and you'll be getting 2s to wound against most uh, smaller units, infantry and monsters and that sort of thing. So you know, plus 1 strength for the Death Guard. Um, is pretty good. You notice a trend within the Death Guard Codex that a lot of stuff that maybe was strength 8 in the last book is now only strength 7 and that's happened essentially because of um, the minus 1 to wound aura. Likewise plus 2 strength weapons like the uh, Flail of Corruption are now also only plus 1 strength again because you know they were they would have wounded on 3s before but now with the minus one toughness, they would have wounded on twos and that might have been a bit too good. So they've sort of reduced everything by one strength just as they're reducing the toughness by one. So getting plus one strength anywhere is great because you can cancel that out and say, no, I am strength six and I'm going to wound on twos or I am strength eight and I'm going to wound on twos or threes. Um, really good to get plus one strength, no reroll wounds, pretty strong. And, you know, an auto pass once per game. Um, you know, it's going to save your life probably a couple of times and be extremely annoying. So that's a really good one. Um, normally when I go for relics, I do quite like just taking a big weapon or something. But I would definitely go for this if I was playing this army. I'd, I'd definitely go for this one. I think that if you had an important character, um, it's a really sensible and useful one to go for. Uh, now the next one is really annoying to say. It's uh, Vomix's Virulent Blight. Uh, it's for a plague weapon only. It replaces a plague weapon, um, ranged or uh, combat. So if you had a you know plague spewer on a character or any other plague weapon for close combat, uh, what happens is any enemy unit that loses uh, one or more wounds to this to this weapon um, counts for the rest of the game as being within contagion range. So if you if your character died maybe if it lost the fight and died or if uh, you know, that unit fell back um, and was no longer in combat, uh, as long as you've done a wound to it, it counts as being in contagion range for the rest of the game. Now, uh, seeing as this is the Harbingers only, um, you're not necessarily going to have one of the more, <laughs> one of the more useful uh, Warlord trait contagion auras. Um, you know, like I've said at the beginning of the video, I don't think any of the Harbinger stuff is, that is good. Um, I think the Wall of Trait specifically affects uh, Pox Walkers anyway. So it's, you know, you wouldn't... What does it do, the Pox Walker? The, it's called the, uh, the Shamble Rock. 
Oh, it's just, yeah, it just, it just gets caused by mortal wounds, so I guess, you know, I guess I, I've never liked rolling for random mortal wounds, you know, it's just, you just roll a four plus and that sort of thing, but, you know, I guess if you had, you know, the random four plus roll for mortal wounds, following them around for the rest of the game, uh, you know, it could be okay, but for me, if, if it was one of the other one of the other contagion abilities might be good. Essentially what I would choose if I was playing this, so I'd probably choose the minus one toughness and just say that unit is now minus one toughness for the rest of the game. Um, could be pretty good, could be quite good, but I'd, I don't think that I'd really bother taking this one either, to be honest. I'd probably look over this one, because it's just, I like to think that I'm gonna just kill, <laughs> um, you know, what I, what I was in combat with. Um, if you were allowed heavier things like vehicles in this list, which you're not, I would probably use this to shoot a particular tank or something, uh, you know, a knight or whatever, and make it minus one toughness for the rest of the game, and then shoot it with, you know, my my large cannons and my, you know, uh, butcher cannons and whatever else, you know, just to just to make it weaker to the heavy guns or you know these guys are all strength eight here with their multi melters and missile launchers. If you could choose a big vehicle that's maybe toughness eight or even. Uh, you know, even uh, nine or something normally, it would just help out a lot to be able to save the rest of the game with minus one toughness. So my missiles are now wound on threes, my heavy uh, multi melters are wound on threes, that sort of thing. Uh, but seeing as you can't have vehicles in this army, um, you know, I'm not sure how useful it's going to be versus, you know, primarily bolters and stuff, really, if you're just stuck with infantry um, or combat attacks. And again, if you're in combat, it's minus one toughness anyway, so really this only matters if you're shooting at it. Uh, I just don't, I'm not sure that it's going to be that useful, because again, like I said, realistically, I'd hope to just kill it. If I was in combat with it and I and I infected it with this minus one toughness, um, you know, thing, um, you know, I'd hope to just kill it anyway, really. Um, but that's up to you. It depends on your play style and what you try to do in a game. Um, the, the next one is called Kanker. Um, it's similar to a relic that the World Eaters have in their Psychic Awakening supplement, where it replaces a plasma pistol with a super plasma pistol. Um, and it's actually really, really good. Um, it gives it, it bumps it to 18 inches instead of 12 inches, makes it strength nine, AP minus three, AP minus four, uh, and damage three. So crazy, one plasma pistol, range 18, strength nine, AP minus four, damage three, and it counts as a plague weapon, surprisingly, it counts as a plague weapon, so you get your real ones to wound as well. Um, I mean, this is, a cent and it doesn't overheat, there's not an overheat on this, it's just that's the profile. So, you know, you, you can pretty much, I mean, with that profile, you know, strength nine, plague weapon, rerolls, AP minus four, flat damage three, that's one dead aggressor, one dead, um, eradicator you know whatever anything that's sort of two to three wounds with you know power armor dead just gonna kill it so it's pretty good um you know would i again take you know spend a relic choice on on this such a sort of a selfish it's only one shot it's a very selfish relic just for one character to pretty much guaranteed almost to just kill one thing each turn with um, its plasma pistol it's good it's fun it's the kind of thing i would take if i had a you know a custom model or a third party model where it had a big fancy looking plasma pistol and I wanted to represent it in the game, I'd take it for that reason. But uh, generally speaking, I don't think I would spend a whole relic choice just to you know take this this plasma pistol. Because again, the World Eaters one is a really solid uh, re relic to give somebody, but would I spend one of my World Eaters relics on a fancy plasma pistol? No, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna take something that gives bonus attacks or at least a big ax or something, you know, so it's, it's okay. But I'm not, I'm not sure about it. And then you've got the Rot Grip. Now this one was previewed uh, by Games Workshop a while ago. It's essentially, it's a Power Fist that replaces either a Power Fist or Play Claw, but it's times three strength. So it's melee times three strength, AP minus three, damage two. Like a normal Fist, uh, it is a Plague Weapon. So, um, you know, if we, again, we take in the minus one Toughness Aura, strength 12, um, even most vehicles that are toughness seven normally will be toughness six now. You're going to be wounding basically everything on twos with the reroll one plague weapon ability. Um, strength, you know, AP minus three, damage two. Um, this is a really great relic. I, I think it's good. Would I take it? Probably not. 
but I do think it's a very solid relic. The reason I say probably not, despite saying it's a good relic, is just because none of my HQ options really have a power fist. I tend to either have a Demon Prince or a Lord of Contagion with the Man Reaper or the um, uh, Plague Reaper. So for me, I don't really have power fists that much in my own Death Guard army, but I think if you do, if you have a, you know, maybe a Chaos Lord in power armor or Terminator armor uh, or something like that that does have a power fist, I think that this is great. There's no reason not to take this. Strength times three makes him strength 12. It's a plague weapon, AP minus three damage two. Horrific, he's gonna wound basically everything on twos. Um, it's, I would say, arguably better than a Plague Reaper or something like that, better than the Demon Prince's sword. You know, it's a really solid relic. I don't have the, uh, the way to use it really. I don't have, you know, I don't use models with a power fist on them, but if you do, um, I definitely think this is a good one to take if you're looking for the big bad weapon uh, that's going to, you know, make a scary character or something. I think this is a good big bad weapon to, to take. Unfortunately, I don't have such positive opinions of the next one. The, the next one is called the Reaper of Misery, and it replaces a Man Reaper or a Plague Reaper, and it is a plague weapon that gives you plus two strength, AP minus three, and damage one. Now, I've got the reason I've got a few problems with this is because, firstly, uh, you you lose any high strength attack. You know, your Plague Reaper obviously is normally strength times two, uh, AP three, damage three. Your Man Reaper has the plus three strength profile. AP minus three damage two. So you lose those even if you had a Man Reaper. You know, you don't keep that with the Man Reaper. It's just the um, the lesser attack. Oh, I forgot to say, you know, being this thing, it gives you, it's two hit rolls per attack. So that's, that's all I mean. If you, you sort of keep the bottom profile of a Man Reaper, but it's an improved bottom profile of a Man Reaper. You still get to make um, 10 attacks. I think they have five attacks for these characters. So, you know, you'd have 10 attacks at strength six, AP minus three damage one. Now that is pretty good. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to pretend that's not good. Um, the reason I'm not a huge fan of this, aside from losing your smash attack, is because you can you can essentially do this without taking a relic, and you can do this, um, you know, without taking a relic and while keeping your your um, smash attack for your for your man reaper. Um, what you do essentially is you'd have a, a Lord of Contagion with a man reaper. And you would just buy him the um, Acidic Malady Deadly Pathogen, because Deadly Pathogens, um, they give you plus one strength. They all give you plus one strength as a, as a generic rule. And then the Acidic Malady specifically is improve the armor penetration by one. So just taking a Deadly Pathogen, which is 20 points, 20 points extra, you would get his normal Man Reaper profile up to strength six, be plus one for the Man Reaper, plus one for the Pathogen, um, and AP minus two damage one, which, you know, frankly is good enough on its own. You still get your, your bonus attacks. It's good enough on its own already, and if you really wanted the AP minus three, um, you could just, um, you could just take the, uh, where is it now? You can't take this obviously on the, the Harbingers, Harbingers guy because it's the, who is it? I think it's the, the Exonerable, which have their Ferric Blight, which is, um, improve the armor penetration by one. Um, but you know, you could have another detachment with that and you could use Flash Outbreak to, you know, give it to this character if you want, if you really wanted minus three AP. I don't think you need it. I think that just paying 20 points to get this guy's Man Reaper, basic profile Man Reaper, up to strength six, AP minus two, damage one, still with that smash attack. Because also, it means that that smash attack now is now essentially plus four strength, making him strength eight instead of seven, which is again great, because now you're wounding things on twos. Um, or, you know, again, pretty much any vehicle on threes. So, you know, I, I feel like you might only be AP minus one now, but, uh, sorry, AP minus two now instead of AP minus three, but the fact that you get to keep your smash profile and have a better smash profile, I, I would just pay the 20 points and I would take Acidic Malady and that's it. You can, you know, take a better relic somewhere else, maybe the Mark of the Terminus Est. Um, that, you know, that's what I would do. So I'm not a fan of this relic, I think it's a bit rubbish. Um, and the last one is called the Raiment of Entropy, and what this does is it treats your Contagion range as being one higher, one turn higher, so if it was turn one, um, I think normally it's one inch on turn one, this would make it um, three inches, you know, if it was turn two where it's normally three inches, it'll be six inches, and so on. Um, however, it's not stackable with any similar abilities, which 
Um, again, you know, like I said earlier about the psychic power for the minus one toughness, it really turns me off this relic. I think it's worthless, basically. Um, you know, if you had, you know, your Lord of Contagion wouldn't take this because he has an innate plus three inches, so it's irrelevant. Um, you know, you you could put this on a character that you know that isn't a Lord of Contagion. I know. Um, I feel like if I was going to take this, I'd put it on a Demon Prince because he obviously doesn't have you know a rule like like the Lord of Contagion does. So you know, if you put it on a Demon Prince, it'd bump him bump him up a bit higher. Um, or if you had any any other character, maybe you had um, one of those uh, Virons, Virions, um, Foul Blight Spawn, that sort of thing. You could put it on them. But I really struggle to think of any situations where you desperately need that their their um, ability to count as as one higher. Personally, I just struggle to think when you you know if you had. Uh, you know, any because all these characters you use in conjunction with other units. And if you did have a foul black spawn or a tallyman, um, or even a sorcerer or a demon prince or something, you know, most of these things they're all close combat based. Um, or if they're not close combat based, they'll be near another unit. You know, and that unit itself potentially could have a bonus. Uh, you know, a range bonus. I just when are you going to need this to happen? When are you going to need a, a character specifically to be? You know, to have a, an increased aura. Um, again, that's not a combat character. That's what I'm trying to say here. If you did have, you know, your terminators and things in combat with the Lord of Contagion, like that ability is useful because he's in combat and it's spreading further. But if we're talking about, you know, a non-terminator character, one of the fetid virons that's going to stand back with your plague marines and that sort of thing, like when are you going to need to to you know be you know three inches three inches further if your if your tally man is stood you know eighteen inches away anyway <laughs> um, it doesn't matter you know the only thing I really would put this on is a demon prince because again he's a, he's you know he'd be in close combat in the same way a lord of contagion would be but if you're in combat you need need a one inch aura anyway to be honest because it's just you know your engagement range is one inch anyway. Um, you know, I've I've been thinking about it for a while, and I honestly just don't, I don't, I struggle to see why you would, you know, really need the range of something like this to be to be one higher. Again, as, seeing as it's not stackable, if it was stackable, oh, I'd be all over it. You go for it, you know, stack it up. I'd love to combo things, you know, you combo things all day, stack it up. But you can't stack it up, you know. So it's not going to work in conjunction with, you know, your uh, Lord of Contagion base ability. It's not going to work in conjunction with the plus six inches you can get from a psychic power. Um, it's not going to work in conjunction with the plus three inches you get from Flash Outbreak or anything else. So, you know, the fact that it, that's really what does it for me. You know, if you could stack it up, great. Can't stack it up, why? You know, it's a bit irrelevant if you can't stack it up, in my opinion. Um, that's, that's the content they have in this book, essentially. Um, I, I definitely, when when they announced this supplement, I was excited. I you know, despite what I said at the, be <laughs> the beginning about the fact that it shouldn't exist, I'm always excited for new army rules, and I was really hoping. Oh, you know, I hope I get some good new Death Guard stuff. They don't need it. I don't think they need it. But you know, I was hoping they get some good new stuff. Um, in my opinion, they haven't really got anything that useful. There's a couple really nice, really nice little gems in there, you could say. But I feel like you know, running the whole thing overall. No vehicles, just infantry based. Um, have to be the harbingers. Ugh, I wouldn't, you know, I'd, 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 I wouldn't bother with it personally. But that's that's just me. If you are running an army that's based on this sort of harbinger playstyle with lots of plague marines and stuff, uh, sorry, poxwalkers and stuff, um, great. But you know, they're not a unit I use anyway. And I think that harbingers is not a great one to use. I think that not using your vehicles, especially it's not just like tired old units like predators. It's you know. Um, Play crawlers, it's um, fetid blight. You know, you can't have anything. Dreadnoughts can't have anything. Um, and I feel like the, the amount of drawbacks that this gives you, um, the few bonuses, you know, I really struggle to see it. Um, unless, again, like I said at the beginning, you really want to just really exploit, 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 exploit the um, strategic reserve steep strike mechanic. That's, you know, I could definitely see you just saying goodbye to CP and just building an army list completely based on deep striking stuff again defensively aggressively to hold objectives to get in the way whatever it is you want to do um, 
if that was your battle plan, I think this could be a valid thing just to exploit that. But um, I, I feel like as a general add-on to the Death Guard Codex, um, I don't think it's going to offer the average player very much. I consider myself the average player. You know, I, I don't think I'm going to really ever use this, probably. Um, it's definitely not adding much to the army. Um, I definitely wish that you um, could have could have made this army of renown with any, you know, any um, plague company. I think if you could have chosen at least your own plague company um, and made these rules sort of general access to the book, which is really what I was hoping they were going to be. You know, when they announced the supplement, I was really hoping that it was just going to be a general addition to the to the army. Um, but you know, being being stuck behind one thing it's kind of like when when you know if chaos space marines get something and they go oh it's only for the black legion though and you go oh well i play iron warriors so i don't want you know it's no good to me it's like they go oh you know you can't complain chaos got something and you're like i know but it's not all chaos it's just one army that i don't play so it didn't count um unfortunately that's how it's going to be um in this case as well if you don't want to play harbingers you can't really make use of this um so you know you know for so for a lot of people this might be a non a non-update anyway, a non-supplement. You know, if you're not going to play Harbingers, not really going to going to use this. So I think it's a shame. It would have been nice if it was for all Death Guard, um, but you know, it's what it is. It saves you thirty-five pounds at least. Save me thirty-five pounds, maybe, <laughs> maybe you as well. Um, um, I don't think I've got anything else to say about this other than you know, disappointing. It's limited to one play company and kind of silly that this supplement exists at all really i mean releasing a supplement for armies that don't even have codexes yet i mean i just unheard of isn't it if it's ridiculous you just wouldn't ever think of it oh here's some dlc for a game that you don't <laughs> don't have yet <laughs> oh it's it's ridiculous um yeah well you know i'm gonna i'm gonna just end it there um, you know, thank you if anybody did did watch this. Thank you for watching it through. Um, I hope you liked it. I hope you stick around for for more videos, um, and I'll see you next time. But uh, you know, I feel like the I feel like the limitation the uh, just fucking this up. It's too much. It's fucking too much. It's too late at night.